Welcome back to Decipher Your Health, or for the first time for some of you. I'm Karen Molander. I'm an emergency medicine physician trained at Stanford just a while back um, uh, and have been practicing emergency medicine for uh, greater than almost 25 plus years. And then uh, Marika is my registered nurse friend to the north, and uh, we are helping, we hope, you, the patient, decipher your health. One of the things we wanted to talk about was why it is important to know your medications and uh, to take the medications under the guidance of your clinician. And Marika has a wonderful background um, in this area and has actually written a book about it. So I'm gonna have her elaborate a little further. Thanks, Karen. Um, as a nurse, so, sometimes it, it frustrated me a lot when I was working with patients that the, they wouldn't look at the pills when I gave them. I would put them in the, in the cup and I would give them and they would just gulp and take them down. But wait a minute, stop. You didn't even look at them. You don't know if, I mean, I hope I didn't make a mistake, but people, nurses are human and we sometimes make mistakes. So I tried to teach my patients to be able to identify their medications. You know, if they always take the orange capsule, I want them to ask me why the capsule is white. Now, chances are it was a different manufacturer, right? Or maybe the physician changed the dose, but it might be a mistake. So I wanted them to say, I think this is wrong. And I would go back to the medication sheet and double check. Most of the time, I hopefully, no, most of the time they were, it, it was just a change in prescription or whatever, but I wanted them to do that because I wanted them to get in the habit when they go to the pharmacy and they get their drug, they were always taking a red pill. How come it's orange now? Did the pharmacist make you're, a mistake? You you're know? making me think of the matrix, the red oh. <laughs> pill or the blue pill. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to make a mistake at home too. And actually that's why I wrote this book. It's called Just the Right Dose. Uh, if you're interested in it is available on, on Amazon, but I, I had a pharmacist review it because I always tell people as well, the pharmacists are the medication experts. That is their thing. They have your file. They know what you're taking, especially if you're going to a bunch of different doctors, if you have specialists or whatever. So if you have medication questions, like let's say you're taking a drug and it's making you nauseous, you really don't want to take it. Ask your pharmacist. The pharmacist might be able to to pinpoint why it's making you nauseous. Maybe you're taking it at the wrong time of day. Maybe you're taking it on an empty stomach when you're not supposed to. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why that might happen. And I do mention that in this book because the pharmacist really is your, your a really good resource when it comes to medications. So um, when I was doing the research for, for, this, for this book, it was amazing how many people don't, understand why they're taking things the way they're taking them. So for example, Karen, why would a medication be taken on an empty stomach? To help with absorption of the medicine. So uh, if, if your stomach has to compete with the hamburger that you had 10 minutes ago, you may not um, uh, have the opportunity to optimally absorb the, the medication uh, and right. have it serve the purpose it does. Or for example, there are certain cholesterol medications that you have to be careful that you don't take with grapefruit juice. Right. So it is really important that you talk to the pharmacist prior to starting a new medication because they might also have the benefit of seeing all the other medicines that you're on and help you clarify your medication regimen mm -hmm. and determine when the best time it is to take this new medicine. Right. And, you know, I, I'm going to bring up another tangent, if I may. People who get their prescriptions mail order, there it, it's a great way to get medications at a cheaper rate um, and it's delivered on a schedule. But if if you're seen in the emergency department for an infection, uh, you have to make sure that that prescription does not default to your mail order pharmacy because if you have an infection, you can't wait seven right. to 14 days to start your antibiotic. That is something that needs to be started acutely. Mm -hmm. So it would be advisable to know 24 hour pharmacies near your home and to let your primary care doctor or the emergency medicine doctor know what that alternative pharmacy is for you. Yeah. You know? But 
you know, just to, to backtrack a little bit to when we get the prescriptions, what I also often told uh, people is don't leave the doctor's office if you don't understand what the prescription is. So yes. you need the doctor to tell you, okay, it, it looks like some secret code, but it's not, okay? It's, it's like, it's the drug that you're supposed to be taking, the dosage and how often and when it should stop or if it should continue. But you need to know, so if you read a prescription and it says to take something uh, P-O-T-I-D, okay? P-O means by mouth, T-I-D means three times a day. But you need to know what it is. And I actually had that, that horrible situation that I, it was a really good thing I knew what the doctor prescribed. When my oldest son was only a couple of months old, he had one of his many ear infections and the physician wrote two teaspoons of the antibiotic that he was supposed to get. I went to fill it, didn't check it, brought it home, went to do something else. And my husband, who was very involved in their care, um, asked me, where's the tablespoon? I said, what do you mean the tablespoon? He says, well, I'm going to give Matthew my anti his antibiotics. I said, there's no tablespoon. It says right here on the label, two tablespoons. It was the pharmacist that made a mistake. But I knew it was two teaspoons, but he didn't go to the doctor's office. He didn't know it was two teaspoons. He has no medical background. He had no reason to think that two tablespoons of this antibiotic would be incorrect. I mean, my son was a very big baby, but he wasn't that big. <laughs> so there's other checks and balances, at least in that we've initiated in the United States. So now they have eliminated kind of some of that medical speak. So if I put in one teaspoon of POTID it, or, or five mLs POTID, they translate it to one teaspoon by mouth three times a day on the printed prescription. Right. So it is in layperson terms. And then the other thing is, if it's a pediatric patient, they um, many, many facilities will put the weight of the child on the prescription. Mm -hmm. And if you're the parent of a child, I would highly recommend that you ask that the weight of your child be put on your prescription, because that allows for another check and balance okay. to occur. Exactly. So there's and, all- And make sure they're updating the weight of your child with every Absolutely. visit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so there are all these ways to do it, like a checks and balances. Ask your doctor to explain your prescription. When you pick it up, don't do what I did and not look at it. At the counter, look at it and read it and make sure you understand it. Because that way, if you notice, if I had done that, but, you know, we were in a rush. We had a young baby who was screaming, um, you know, but if you ask right then and there, you can catch the mistake. And then, the you know, the pharmacist would have said, okay, let me double check. He would have gone to double check and you, oh, my goodness, that's a terrible mistake. You know, like I said, we're, like I've said before, we are human. We do, mistakes do happen. So we do need to be able to check on those things. And if you, and, and by checking with your, your doctor, I've had it actually come across some doctors who've written a prescription. And as they are explaining it to the patient, they realize, you know what, that's not really what I wanted to give you. So when they were talking about it, they realized, so you wanted to add something? Well, I was just going to say, you're bringing up an important point is that um, you shouldn't leave the provider patient interaction without understanding why you're being prescribed this medicine. Yeah. And feel free to ask, is there a non-medical alternative? Oh yeah. Can I, for example, um, rather than starting this new medicine for diabetes, are there some lifestyle changes that I can make as an alternative? Are there other medication alternatives that exist out there? What is the side effect profile? And, you know, I think you were going to mention, Marika, a little bit about the very detailed sheet of information that you oh. get from the pharmacist that all of a sudden lists 3,246 different side effects of various medications. And I think the key thing as a consumer is understanding what your relative risk is. On that sheet, they're telling you every possible allergic reaction that can happen with this medication. So it could be one out of 500 million people had a case of hives, or it could be one out of 10 people mm -hmm. had a case of hives. Yeah. So knowing what your relative risk is of that side effect. And I have had patients in the emergency department that tell me, 
I cannot look at that because I will start to worry that I have that side effect and then yes. I will not take that medicine. So you can talk to my partner mm -hmm. and explain this to them, but I have to do earmuffs because I will start to worry and yeah. I, I cannot see that information. And that is something that's very important to convey, you know, whether you have anxiety about a possible side effect of a medication or anxiety about visiting the doctor at all. So I think this is a good place to um, finish off by acknowledging that people will Google their drugs. They will look online and that is where they're going to find a lot of the scary stuff. They might go to a Facebook page that's devoted to a particular drug and how terrible it was. And that's not to say it wasn't terrible for the people who are posting there. But you have to understand when you look online for something, it's usually the people who have problems who post. So if you're going, let's say you own a Toyota Corolla, okay, you love the car. If you go to a Toyota Corolla page, you might see tons and tons of complaints because the people who aren't complaining aren't there. And it's the same thing with the drugs. So I'm not saying that the drugs might not do bad things to some people. I'm saying, keep it in perspective. And if you're Googling, chances are for anything, you will find people who have a hard time with it, right? And I think that's the other challenge is, let's say you find some information out about a drug and it does scare you. Whether you looked at a YouTube video, 10 TikTok videos, or a Facebook post, the important thing is before you decide to stop a medication that you communicate with your primary care provider. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we live in a democratic country as, and I would say you Canadians do too. <laughs> I'll give you credit. Just kidding. And then uh, I, I think it's important to realize that you are free to choose, but you need to understand the risk the benefit and the alternative to that choice, whether it be taking a medication, not taking a medication, or taking it in a different fashion. The key is communicating your needs, your wants, your desires with your primary care team. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So just a reminder that um, Decipher Your Health is an educational and informative project. We are not offering any advice. We're not offering um, treatment or diagnosis. And I will let Karen finish that. Our, our goal here is to educate and optimize your health care process. We are not your primary care providers. We hope to give you information to share with your primary care provider who has that relationship with you so that you can communicate effectively, concisely, and collaboratively. Perfect. So that's it for now, and we will hopefully see you with our next video. Bye for now. Take care.